Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to this session, and thank you very much for coming. It's the end of a long couple of days, so we really appreciate the amount of people who turned up. So uh, thank you very much. Um, my name's Celia Taylor. I'm the Managing Director of Mendon Media, and uh, this is the Commissioning Art session, just to check you're in the right room. Uh, and I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Straight away. Uh, and basically, the point of today is to... Um, to question our illustrious panel here, for them to talk about uh, their commissioning needs, uh, what's been going on in their output, what they're looking for, uh, and then generally to have a sort of a discussion about what is the purpose of arts programming. Um, and if we can't defend arts programming, then how can we expect to survive in the future? So that'll be the sort of broad thrust of it. Uh, I also have a buzzer penalty, because I'm sure you've been to millions of sessions. So if anybody says innovative, if anybody says bold, if anybody says risky, so watch out for that, and, uh, and maybe, hopefully, it will Bastard. be nice and quiet, or hopefully, it will just spontaneously combust with overuse, but... Um, and I suspect I will probably fall guilty to that too, but uh, just have a bit of a laugh. Uh, so just to introduce everybody, uh, we have Shaminda Nahal, who's the commissioning editor for Specialist Factual at Channel 4, and obviously a big part of that remit is arts on Channel 4. Uh, then Emma Cusack, who's uh, commissioning editor for arts at the BBC across all channels. Uh, and then at the end, uh, Phil Edgar-Jones, who's the director of Sky Arts, amongst other things. So a really fantastic broad range of channels and content and uh, commitment to the arts. So it's very exciting to have them here. Uh, just briefly, just when I was thinking about these things, you always think, Ooh, what are we going to talk about? Um, so I started thinking about what is the purpose of art programming? What is the purpose of art? So I've consulted a painter, a poet, a film director and a musician. So let's start at the top, shall we, with Picasso. He said, the purpose of art is washing the dust of daily life off our souls. Nice poetic start. Uh, a poet called Dana Gioria, who I've never heard of before. Uh, the real purpose of art is to create complete humans capable of leading successful and productive lives in a free society. Uh, and then a film director said, Leo Tolstoy said that the purpose of art is to teach you to love life, which I think is a good one. And then good old Bob Dylan, always reliable said the highest purpose of art is to inspire. What else can you do? What else can you do for anyone but to inspire them? Uh, and obviously arts programming has inspired us in our, in our lives and continues to do so. Uh, so uh, first of all, I asked these guys to tell me what had inspired them and sort of get under their skin a little bit, give them a bit of personality about what they like and what they don't like. So uh, Shaminda, should we start with you first? What have you got to show us that inspires you and, and gets you out of bed in the morning? Oh. <clears throat> well, that is Yayoi Kusama. I don't know if I'm... I'm glad I didn't have to say pronouncing that. ...pronouncing her name right. But I just um, fell in love with her when I saw um, a sort of show of hers at the Serpentine Gallery. And I just find everything about her visually and so fascinating about her art. And then once I started reading about her, she, you know, she has this amazing story. You know, she, she sort of left Japan to go to New York, um, lived this incredible life in New York. She was basically starving. She had no money for food. And she was sort of painting these huge canvases that were kind of like nets, like over and over and over again in this really obsessive way. And bit by bit, she started to be discovered. And like she was doing all this dots and nets and stuff like that, even before the whole boom in abstract <laughs> expressionism. And she's still working. She's well into her 80s, I think it is now. Um, she's living in a sort of, um, sort of, sort of psychiatrical hospital still in Japan. And I just love the way she connects with people of all ages and young people. She still looks so incredibly cool and relevant. And all that sort of feminine, feminist psychodrama stuff about her absolutely inspires me. And even just actually looking at that picture makes me feel kind of alive. What else have you got? Uh, oh, Public Enemy. Um, I love um, hip-hop and always have. And the first time I heard it, I guess, as a teenager, it just literally blew my mind. And I went to see Public Enemy and they performed Bring the Noise at Brixton Academy in, in 1990. And it just, that literally blew me away. The, the rhythm and the noise and the loudness of it, it just sort of shocks you out of your everyday life. And I still love... 
um, hip hop and grime and good and I just uh, adore what else them. what else and then then we were asked oh all about Eve all about Eve is I mean it's really hard to choose your favorite film isn't it but that's one that I can just watch there's loads of films that I love but I can't actually face watching again and you'd never want to recreate that one sort of private odd moment that you had with that film but this film I just love watching over and over again and I just love the thing about the relationship between those two women and the circularity of it and the love and the hate between those two women and it just, I just think it says so much and has so many brilliant layers. And I love the way it's been reinvented over and over again in lots of other different art forms. So I guess one, apart from Public Enemy, there is a theme about just being interested in um, artists that really say something about women. And that's something I come back to a lot. But then also Public Enemy. Cool. <laughs> Emma. OK, so... Oh, oh we've, that was, have that we was got... me. That was all Phil. Is it you next in the order of clips? Have we got that wrong, Susie? Is it Phil next? Uh, no, Go on then, Emma. So, um, William Kentridge. But my, the, the bit that I saw, the reason why I thought of William Kentridge was that I went to Freeze a couple of years ago and I was sort of bombarded by a mass of different galleries <coughs> and artwork and sort of making your way through all these sort of rows and rows of art. I actually went into one gallery that had his films and they had three walls of um, his incredible shadow puppets and it was such an amazing experience to be completely immersed in this fantastically colourful musical world that I thought of him. I think that's a really awful question, and I couldn't. I, have I know it's so a really dark question, but anyway. So that was, so that was that was that um, that was that was why I chose him. The next one is Velakuti. So um, I'm a big fan of Velakuti. Always have been. Um, love African. You know, music. you're all going to get documentary pictures about all these people now. Sorry. I know, and I've got a bit of an African <laughs> theme going here now. I realise. But I, um, yeah, I love his music. I actually filmed with him in the shrine before he died, which um, was quite an experience. But I'm a lifelong fan, so amazing. Good. And somebody else? Or is that it? Okay. The Lives of Others. Fantastic film. Absolutely brilliant about sort of betrayal and hope and humanity. I just thought it was one of those films that you feel utterly gutted by the end of it. It sort of moved me completely. Good. Phil? So I've, my, the artist I chose is uh, 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 somebody called Sarah Maple. Hang on, and we're we'll rewinding, so rewinding the internet. The order. Sorry. So it's, this, is, this is someone called Sarah Maple. So she's an emerging artist. Now, the reason she inspires me, we, we do at Sky, we have a scholarship program <clears throat> where we sponsor five young artists across various uh, genres and disciplines uh, for a year. And we give them a bursary of £30,000 and they uh, spend a year off creating their art. And we see loads of people, obviously, and loads of people apply. And Sarah was just somebody that completely stood out. And it's a, it's a story of, for me, of, of kind of artistic resilience in some respects. She was, she started applying her trade as an artist when she came out of art school. She, she's a young mixed race uh, Muslim uh, uh, woman. I can't remember if, where she's from, Celia. Actually, Reading, she's, isn't it? Something. Uh, like no. Um, oh God. Crawley. 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 And she'd, she'd given up, um, her, her art is quite provocative, it talks about feminism, it talks about uh, being a young m Muslim woman in, in the UK, and she'd had an exhibition and she got lots of uh, terrible sort of trolling on the internet and bricks through her studio window, so she gave it up and went to work in a call centre. Uh, and then she saw the Sky Art Scholarships and kind of it rescued her and allowed her to start uh, creating her work again. And she's gone on to sort of greater and greater things uh, all the time and she sells her work for quite a lot of money now oh, so I wish I'd, anymore, I wish I'd bought some when it was kind of at the beginning of it but she, she really inspires me because you know she's she's got a story to tell and she's uh, determined to tell it um, musically uh, I, I you know god on any different day you will choose somebody or something different that, that you love and that inspires you but I think on the particular day I got this email I was as usual doing my emails in the office but and I listen to Philip Glass when I'm doing that because it's kind of strangely hypnotic music if anyone's familiar with it uh, mathematical repetitive um, I'm, I, I go to the opera a lot and at the English National Opera uh, there's this sort of home of Philip Glass and he comes sometimes and uh, opens up his uh, the season of his operas I've seen them all I talk to the orchestra about 
playing them. A lot of them get repetitive strain injury after playing some Philip Glass music for a while. Um, and I sort of discovered him through Bowie when I was younger. And it, he, was, he was kind of my entry into classical music as well. So he, he you know, and that's, I sort of love rhythm. So um, in fact, I would be quite interested in a documentary about Philip Glass if there's there something you specific we're looking for. Join the you, queue. If you've got access, <laughs> if, you can do a, if you can get a, an interview with him, all the better. That's fantastic. Yeah. And then film wise, I, again, any given day, but I chose this film, which I remember watching when I was very, very young. And it's called A Matter of Life and Death. It's a kind of slight love story, like propaganda film. It's, it's Pell and Pressburger. It, was, it came out uh, during the Second World War. Uh, this is the story of an airman who gets shot down. He's hovering between life and death. And the, this woman who was on the radio the other, the other side of the call when he ditched his airplane in the sea uh, falls in love with him. And they're trying to sort of uh, save him. There's lots of philosophical arguments. He goes into uh, heaven and tries to argue himself back into the, into the world. I'm not explaining this very well, but it was a sumptuous, one of the things that struck me about it when I was very young was the sheer beauty of the imagery in the film. So every frame is like a, a portrait, it's like a painting, it's beautiful. Brilliant, fantastic. Yeah. I also like The Life of Brian because it's dead funny. Yeah. I, don't know, but I had put that in first. And that Fantastically was, uh, <laughs> eclectic uh, mixture of stuff there, but uh, some common themes and some completely different themes. So that's sort of your own personal taste, the things that inspired you. Um, you know, what, what's the personality of your output on Channel 4? What's the personality of the Channel 4 arts output, Shaminda? Um, I mean, I think we, you know, we don't have... a hours and hours of arts output or a whole channel or um, you know endless channels so we're kind of so we don't have that much but what we do have we want to feel really different to what everyone else is doing um, I mean if I wanted to sort of express a personality I suppose it would be a bit like you know those people I was talking about before just it feels you know there's real emotion in there there's real real a real kind of sense of people who kind of blow your mind there's a sort of I'd want a bit of craziness and anarchy in our art stuff I can't say that's always there but I just want it to feel feel big and exciting and not just making you think differently about the world but just kind of like totally smashing up what you think about the world and just feeling really vibrant and really saying something it shouldn't be about something or a survey or something but we you know we always talk about seeing the world through artists eyes but i think we want to go even further than that now and just kind of just just not even through our size, but just giving artists space to do mad things would be an exciting um, thing for us to do. So sorry, I don't know if... So the personality should be... I mean, it, this, if this was a person, what I'm saying sounds really horrendous because you wouldn't actually <laughs> want to meet this person. But, but the personality of what I'd like it to feel like. And so I suppose in order to explain what I'm talking about, the thing that I can't get out of my mind at the moment, which, sorry to be boring because I said this in another panel this morning, but is the Childish Gambino, Donald Glover, This Is America video, mm. which if I could say what quality would I dream about having in Channel 4 Specialist Factual, it would be that. It would be that, bam, this is America. You're going to like think about America in a totally different way that you have before. You're going to be visually totally inspired and it's going to blow your mind and everyone's going to be talking about it all around the world. That's what I would want us to do. Sounds good. Uh, that sounds like a great person. I'd love to go have a drink with them. Uh, Emma. How do you okay, sum so up? It's, it's harder for you because you, yeah. you've got multiple personalities, exactly. so which I'm is a dock in itself. I'm rather schizophrenic. So on BBC One, I think I'm welcoming. I think I'm um, uh, arms open to everybody. So really wanting to reach out and entertain as many as we can. That's <coughs> what I think BBC One is. BBC Two, I think... We, I've got slight split personality even on BBC Two. On the one hand, we want to do the big creative docs that Mark Bell here looks after. So that's reputation, that's been quite solid, but artistic. Um, and then I am trying to push at the boundaries of what I am, what is arts programs on BBC Two. So I suppose that's what I'm trying to do, push a little bit of what could a midweek series be. So I'm a bit quizzical and a bit open on that. Whereas on BBC Four, I'm really a little bit edgy, occasionally um, uh, provocative, uh, can be a bit um, puzzling, but I'd like to think always open to ideas. 
There we go. That's my great. split personality. <laughs> Bold. <laughs> Innovative. <laughs> risky. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's a hat trick. Um, <laughs> triple so, score, triple, triple threat. A triple threat, yeah. So, I mean, like, I mean Sky Arts is, is kind of, it, I, I don't know if I have hesitate to design a single, singular personality because we, with some things we want to be kind of accessible and friendly and also have a kind of light touch across our programming. We approach arts with a sense of humor. I don't think we can, uh, we want to be too chin strokey about it. Uh, we do sometimes also want to be provocative as well, you know, so we do quite a lot of stuff that uh, isn't necessarily, we don't have pressure of ratings as well, so this is quite, quite use, use, useful to allow us to do stuff that just pushes around the edges a little bit more. Um, we like to be, uh, we, we sort of recognise as well that, it, we always think of Sky Arts as a, a you're not going to like everything, but it's a place to find something that you love. So you're kind of, person who watches 15 hours of Wagner in German from Bayreuth isn't going to be the person that watches André Roux. So uh, we should be catering for a myriad of personalities, really. Uh, and we can be very serious and very, um, uh, we can sometimes be very, very, sort of very niche and we can be very broad at the same time. So I, 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 I know it's us. I mean, the personality of a channel is a bit like the personality of the people who work on it, <laughs> I think, generally. So it's a bit like me. Yeah. And uh, what, you know, when you're looking to fit things into that, how, how can you help this audience? Because obviously these sessions are, are great to sort of discuss the, the, great, the, the great questions about arts programming, but obviously uh, everybody is trying to pitch ideas that you're going to love. So what is, it, what is it that you're after? Can you give us a little shopping list of things that you are after on Sky Arts? What well, gaps have you got? So I don't really... It's the things that work best for us is if, you know, we don't have a big marketing budget, we don't have a huge sort of PR presence. The things that work best for us are great partnerships uh, and big name talent. And we don't have any trouble attracting both. Uh, so just to give you some examples of the programs that uh, do well for us, uh, we do a program called um, Treasures of the British Library, which is a partnership with the British Library. They can elevate us, we can elevate them a little bit. It's the famous people go into the library and uh, go through their passions with the curators and the curators find treasures in the library that speak to their passions. We do a show called Tate Britain's Great Art Walks, uh, where again, it's famous people like um, Billy Connolly or Helena Bonham Carter will take a walk through the landscape of a, a, that an artist uh, painted in with Gus Casely Hayford, who's a phenomenal art historian. Uh, then we'll do partnerships uh, with um, uh, we, we do partnerships with the um, Royal Academy, with uh, English National Ballet, English National Opera, Northern Ballet. So, you know, looking for partnerships that might uh, resonate with us would be good, and it could be sort of anybody. And, can, and do you help people broker some of those partnerships? Yes, absolutely. Because obviously, yeah. if you're a small indie, you know, getting the trust of the, you know, blind born or something is not always easy. So, yeah, are I mean, you willing to help people? Yeah, well, that? absolutely. So, if you've got an, an idea for a thing that you could do with a partner, then we'll help you broker that relationship if we like the idea, okay. definitely. Great. Anything, what would you get too much of that you kind of go, oh, not again? Oh, we get a lot of, uh, at the moment I'm not really interested in uh, formatted entertainment shows. We've got three of those now, and <laughs> that's enough, I think. Which about Portrait So we've got Portrait Artists of, of the Year, which is a very uh, most successful show, Landscape Artists of the Year, which is our second most successful show, and Master of Photography, which is a very successful show for so us So enough for well. competitions so got those, and so formats. These and were designed as these sort of pillars that get new audiences into the channel, and then we can surprise them with other stuff. So I'm more interested at the moment probably in great partnerships with institutions or stuff that's very much sort of artist-led as well. So again, sort of slightly seeing through the artist's eyes something I'd nick from Channel 4. What would you nick from Sky Arts, Chiminda? Um, well, Phil, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> With his lovely personality. Um, uh, now, I can I just say, I'm, I've actually had trouble even remembering what we've done on Channel 4 in the last year. So you don't know what's on Sky Arts? Sky just say Portrait actually, Artists of the Year. Actually, do you know what? I have been watching Sky Say Arts. Portrait Artists of the Year and you I go, watched, oh no, the BBC already no, has nicked that. I have watched that and I really <laughs> There was a, um, a sort of slightly, really unusual but very tempting French documentary um, that had a sort of Agatha Christie vibe that I watched at Christmas. You're asking me to remember this. <laughs> yeah, it was so interesting. Yeah. I was like, what, what was that? It was sort of like a recreation of a scene from, one, from an Agatha Christie film played out by French psychiatrists, and I did not imagine this. It was real. And I thought, God, Sky Arts are so interesting. And like... 
totally innovative. You know, so uh, um, I do, I do, I do like a lot of that output. But shall I? Shall yes. I say something yeah. About do what, what are you after? Because I think you know it's so helpful to people to know where the. I mean, obviously, you don't want to be too prescriptive, but just a sense of you know where the open doors are and where the shut doors are is so helpful for the audience. Okay, well, like, we hate to give out the message that we have any sort of shut doors because we're very open, open and open-minded people. <laughs> but um, I suppose I've given the kind of, I've given a sense of what we're looking for, which is really kind of big, exciting, mad things that say something about Britain and the world. So that's the sort of big thing. Um, I'm quite excited about opportunities for live, for instance. I think, you know, that's one of the great and interesting, in, in a world where we've got all these, you know, on-demand channels and stuff, live feels like a really exciting thing for a terrestrial channel to be thinking about. So I'm quite interested in kind of really big, exciting propositions that might be, you know, I don't know, on a particular theme or, you know, interfering in the national conversation in some way at an exciting moment. Is there some brilliant combination of... Uh, of sort of documentary and live that we could be doing. So it's really just like big and exciting things. Like we've had got, we've done some really brilliant stuff in the last few years that had that sort of big eventy feel. Like what? Um, well, like G Gay Wedding the Musical was something that I really loved that marked that moment of, um, you know, the le legalization of same sex marriage. And it was such a brilliant and fun way to do it. Like it was really enjoyable and like there was Kylie Minogue and Stephen Fry in it. Um, so it's sort of like, but how can we sort of expand those moments and be even more ambitious and have some combination of film and live or events? So I'd love people to be really thinking big about how we do it. So live is exciting. You know, talent is obviously massive for us. And, you know, new voices, unheard voices. So does, when you say talent, does that mean can, are you up for new talent? Well, and when I say talent, I mean like across the board, not just on-screen talent. Obviously, we've got Grayson Perry, who is so exciting and such a big part of Channel 4, obviously the biggest face of our arts coverage and also of the whole channel, and is wonderful, and we continue to work with him. But we'd love to find other people who, and you know how, all of you know how difficult it is to, you know, find artists who are interested or willing or able to communicate in that way and immerse themselves in kind of interesting bits of life and make TV out of it and make art out of it. It's really hard so finding those people is a, is a really interesting challenge but it's not even just the on-screen talent you know we're excited about finding brilliant directing talent brilliant producers and writers and people who just want to make brilliant stuff that could be part of making tv for us you know we have uh, we do random acts which is you know really exciting short film strand that we've been doing for a few years now which um, a lot of young filmmakers do it really exciting because a lot of those short films are about 200 are made a year a lot of them are out outside London. Um, a third of them in the last year were made by um, black and minority ethnic talents, um, producers and directors. So anyway, it's talent across the board that we're excited about. And, you know, it's art, you know, it could be artist-led things in the kind of grace and mold. It could be those big eventy things. It could be quite mad sort of just art, artistic creations that we haven't thought about. And, um, you know, we've got space for experimentation. That's part of who we are on Channel 4, and we must do that at the same time as obviously trying to be broad and popular and you know trying to get people to watch and enjoy programs and talk about them and feel you know big part kind of we don't want to be niche um, but equally we do have that hunger to sort of be a bit mad and say new things so um, say something big you know like there's so much. Does big so count? Does big count? No, I think it does. I didn't say bold. I didn't <laughs> oh, that's say true. Bold. Hold on. I was very careful to say big and not the four-letter <laughs> word that starts with B. Anyway, I can't remember the question now. So. That's fine. Thank you, Emma. What, we'll get through the shopping list and uh, and then we'll move on to a broader discussion, hopefully, as well. Because I know well, it's my shopping list. Obviously, is huge. Um, I mean, it, music and arts, we commission over 400 hours a year, so that's quite a lot. Quite a long shopping list. Um, but I think for arts. Um, I'm going to, I could go on and on and on and fill this whole time telling you what the sort of different pro sorts of programmes are we're looking for, but I think <coughs> the main headlines really at the moment is that for, for Mark's creative docs, it's finding great directing talent and great ideas and telling stories in a really fresh way um, that really uh, are a chance for the filmmaker to be artist as much as the subject. So I think that's, you know, I think that's a real... We're really looking for that. Mark is really looking for that. For, for me, I think both, um, and it's the same on 214 really, for Mark and for myself, what I'm looking for is really trying to do arts programs in a different way. 
I get quite a lot of treatments that feel all the same. They're, they're good ideas, and I can see that people have worked really hard to send them in. But I think what, what we're really trying to do is either look at pushing into different formats for, um, for arts programmes, especially on two midweek. How can we push against what regular arts programmes are? How can we... Well, what is a regular arts programme? Well, I mean, traditionally, it's sort of white, middle-aged man walking along and lecturing to some pretty pictures. Is that kind so of what you mean? Some, so you could try something different. So let's try something different. What else can we do? For midweek especially, it's like it's trying to... a middle-aged white woman walking along, giving a lecture to... No, no I'm, 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 being, I'm, being, I'm being silly, but I mean, you know, you know, how open are you really to, to no, new really formats open. and structures? Because really that's very exciting to hear that. No, I mean, absolutely. Especially, I mean, we are definitely, I'm not going to say taking risks, obviously, but, um, but we definitely want to try something fresh and different midweek BBC Two that will play to a bigger audience. What, what time in the schedule? Because obviously that gives a, a sort of nine, help. Nine, nine o'clock. So it's got to be, so it's got to be peak. So yeah, it's so got it's to be, peak. So it's how do we make an hour. arts peak? How do we make it inclusive? How do we make the audience come to that? That's the challenge for BBC Two. For BBC Four, you can ask that question, but in a slightly different way, which is how do we tell the stories in a, in a fresh way? How do we make the program, the subject, unusual? Is it, is it, the, is it the tone? Is it the structure? I'm really interested in trying to find different... Uh, ways to approach. And how do, how do people get that? I mean, you know, I'm obviously I spent a long time being a commissioner and I'm on the other side. It's very hard to express that in a treatment. How, how do you well, get, how do you get yeah. a commissioning editor to trust you that you're going to deliver on these things if it's, you know, if your first entry point is, is a piece of paper? It's well, do you know tricky. what? It's, it's, and they do jump out, the ones, that, mm. the ones that do. They really do. And I think for me, especially on BBC Four, it's ideas driven. It's got to be, what are the ideas? What is it telling us about us? But also, how is it structuring itself? You know, if you're doing it, sending in a series, how is that structured that makes it feel quite interesting? It's not chronological. It's not a geographical journey. It's actually a journey of ideas. And I think that's really exciting and allows you to put things together and make connections. Do you find that the arts community pitching ideas, do you, do you, do you sort of get frustrated that they're not being adventurous enough looking at you all out there? Is that, is that, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it goes two ways. And I think, you know, maybe we've, you know, the indie community feels that if they do that, they won't get commissioned. And, you know, and where's the balance? And if you generally all three of you open, are you inviting everybody in this room to send you ideas that they genuinely feel excited about as opposed to things that they think they're going to get commissioned? You, you can sort of do both if you like. Yeah. I mean, that's, I think there's a space for a sort of both. Both those things. I mean, it's interesting because I, I do, I obviously run Sky Arts and I also do the entertainment commissioning for Sky One. And in my time on Sky Arts, I've, I've, I kind of feel like 90% of the ideas I get are actually really good. <laughs> uh, really good subjects, there's quite an interesting approach often. And I sort of can't do everything, that's the kind of frustration around it. Whereas when I'm doing Sky One stuff, I have to say the opposite was true, 90% of the ideas I get are pretty ordinary and are just like something else. Uh, and you know, one of the things I wanted to do when I took over the channel was to reach out, not just to TV producers, but to um, artists as well, and create collaborations with TV producers that would lead to something slightly different. So we, we had a project called Amplify, where we sort of speed dated, we don't do it anymore, but we're, gonna, we're doing something else. Um, we speed dated um, artists and, and producers, and we came up with some really interesting ideas, lots of which we developed, some of which made it onto screen, like we did it, we ended up doing a, a mu piece of musical theater that was uh, created by uh, computer algorithms. Uh, largely, and we did. We created a symphony for animals to enjoy. One sea lion quite liked it, uh, and, a, and, a, and a parrot. And the parrot uh, definitely and liked it. And the parrot it, was yeah. dancing. We had a dancing parrot, and the channel was amazing. So, uh, and, and those sort of sort of came about with uh, through collaborations with artists and um, and uh, producers. Because I think you know, using uh, sometimes for me, you know, I want to do stuff that's broad appeal. I want to do stuff that people will love and enjoy and it will speak to their passions and their interests and the things they love. But there's a space on uh, Sky Arts as well to, uh, to use television as, a, as an art form and do something slightly different with it as well. And I don't think I get enough of that, actually. Uh, and that would be 
That's always going to be interesting. Sam, Sh Shaminda, you're nodding. Uh, we've, we've, we asked well, you... I was, I was actually feeling so guilty about not being able to name more Sky Arts programmes that I've just remembered two more. I hope they're the ones I can remember as well. <laughs> like Picasso Live. I think oh, yes, really yeah, yeah. And also this amazing series about rock and roll that was all about emotions. Oh, it was fantastic. It like, yeah. really felt very different. Yeah. I could be and so I can actually now remember <laughs> quite a few of their programmes. Like, it was all Celia's idea. <laughs> <as well. laughs> no, that's, yeah. But, but that, was, that was a kind of an artful approach to the yeah. rock genre yeah i mean it's interesting because when you talk about how do you commission these programs about ideas it, it i can i can understand that it is a bit giving. so let me if i give a sort of uh, an illustration so um for example we did uh, a program about utopias and that really was just a, we went through uh literature um philosophy um religion, everything, and, and there was no, it was just through Star Trek, through, <coughs> you know, through a, all those sort of... I remember that, was good. It was, it, and it was really just a connection of ideas, and on the paper you suddenly thought, oh, this is, it, it, this is exciting, because actually it's about the world we, we dream of, maybe, you know, this sort of somewhere, this, this magical place that we could all end up in. So it touches in something that we're all interested in. I think also when we did a program about Japan, instead of doing a program that was a geographical journey, it was a beautiful series with Dr. James Fox, but it was about the home, the city, and nature. And, and you pulled on all sorts of different elements of Japanese culture, and it just was a really fascinating watch, and it didn't feel obvious at all. And it was connected by ideas again, and I think that, I think that works. And in music, we did it, we've just done a program about house music, and that was about the beat, about um, the DJ and the club. So it's just how you structure these big subjects, how you come at it, and, and the ones that do it well do jump out, you know, Absolutely. they really do. I could say maybe something helpful about that. Do, you, please do. That would be lovely. I, I enjoyed a lot of those programmes, although I didn't see the Japan one. But just to, to differentiate us, those programmes were all brilliant, and even the rock and roll one, which I, I loved. And I loved something, um, Emma's series on dance that she did recently, and the Saturday yeah. Night Fever big thing on Saturday Night was amazing. But for I would say that for us, it the things have to speak much more closely to like something that's happening now and feels a bit closer to things that people are talking about or that kind of matter to people in Britain today. So that it all feels very close to things that are happening now and sort of say something about it. So that's what I would be excited about is if and it took any sort of shape or form or artist or whatever, but it felt that's why that's the sort of childish Gambino thing that I love. It's, it feels like utterly relevant and things that I've liked that I've seen the last year, not even on TV, like the Basquiat exhibition had so many layers that felt relevant. It was brilliant to go into the Barbican and see loads of young black people in that. In fact, I think it had its highest attendance of black and minority ethnic people than any other exhibition ever had. How amazing is that? You know, and um, you know, like Network at the National Theatre felt so relevant as we sort of are talking about fake news and the sort of power of corporations. Yeah, and, and a TV star from yeah. Breaking Bad bringing a massive audience amazing. into the National so Theatre. Like extraordinary. Those things that felt like they were really saying something about the world we live in now. How can we do that? And how can we kind of? push that as far as we can to just make something brilliant that may or may not, sometimes that might feel a bit out there and mad, sometimes we might be able to make it in something to speak that speaks to a really broad audience, which would be fantastic. So you've brought some, you've all brought a clips to show, which um, are sort of exciting, and we're not going to use any of the words, otherwise I'll have to buzz myself. Uh, exciting, nerve-wracking, um, uh, stretching some boundaries a bit. So we've asked you to sort of bring some examples and talk about that. So do you, do you want, I don't know, which order are they in? I can't remember. Phil first, Phil. What which one, <laughs> which, which clip would this be? This is the, the R50 type stuff? Yes. Yeah. Oh, great. So do you want me to talk about it first? Or just yeah, it? just introduce it and tell us, tell us why it's important and, and, and why it's sort of an example of you sort of trying to step out of traditional arts programming. So actually, it's also partly stepping out of being a traditional television channel, which is part of the thing we do. So, so part of uh, Sky Arts is, is, is it's a glorious little jewel, actually, in the sky. Um, I was going to say Death Star. <laughs> But uh, Empire, <laughs> um, um, in the sky, um, Empire, there's literally no pressure on ratings. There's, there's, the, the, when I go upstairs to say I'm going to do something slightly bonkers and mad, that, that's the thing they kind of love. Uh, and we're 
currently undertaking a bit of a review of the channel, and one of my obsessions is how do you grow it beyond just being a TV channel and become something that's kind of relevant in the real world? Because I think that the arts and Sky Arts in particular, uniquely in the portfolio of uh, Sky Channels, is the one that can kind of get out and talk to people on a one-to-one -one basis. So uh, we've done various things we, over, over the years, but we're currently in the middle of a two-year project which is called Art 50, a little bit of a pun on Article 50. I used to work in the Big Breakfast years ago. I can only do things in puns. Um, it's, it, and it's, it's not obsessed with Brexit or anything else, but it's, it's about identity and it's about what it means to be British. So the provocation to the artist is, what does it mean to be British today, right at this moment? Uh, what's the future going to look like? What does the present look like? What does the past look like? Uh, and so we've had a huge response to it. Over a thousand artists responded and we commissioned 50 pieces uh, from all over the country. Uh, poetry, works, visual arts, dance, all the rest of it, all speaking into that one particular theme. It will culminate uh, next February in an event at the Barbican uh, down in London and the Baltic and the Sage up in Gateshead, where we'll, we'll do a sort of live day of, uh, on the day we leave um, Europe, we'll do a sort of live day of re response to Britishness. That, that, that We don't know what the program is yet either, so this is... I'm not going to say risky. I just did. Um, it, the, the, the great, the, the great, risky the, thing about it is the, artists actually delivering on time. That's probably the well. Thing. No, it's, it's, <laughs> it's that they do take their time. But the, but the point about this was we wanted it to be entirely artist-led, unmediated really by us. We asked the question, and it's up to them to provide the response. Uh, we didn't start out thinking what, uh, having any idea what the television outcome was going to be. We still don't really actually know. And I quite like that, you know, because that, that we'll be led by what the, what the ideas tell, tell us to do. Uh, and we've commissioned all the projects now and uh, I'm incredibly excited. We've got some well-known people like uh, Simon Ar Armitage, the poet, uh, Nitin Sonny is composing a national anthem, new national anthem. We're going to create a new flag. Um, Lem Sissy's done a, uh, a new constitution that's going, or a constitution rather, that's going to uh, sit in uh, Salisbury Cathedral uh, for a while. And, um, oh gosh, we've got so, so much. Uh, John Goldberg did a play up in Hull uh, called, I can't remember what it was called actually, but it was, it was about a couple who were on different sides of the Brexit divide. But the, the whole point of this is about, um, you, you know, are we a nation, what's, how are we as a nation divided and how are we united? And, and it's, have you, got, it's have you thing, got a clip? I've got a clip, I'll stop waffling um, and show the clip. Yeah. <laughs> it's very nice to have a bit of applause. Yeah, it looks fantastic. I'm oh, very excited about this because it's, it's, again, it's about new voices and, and, you know, I think part of our job is to support the creative community and, and, and some find some new people with new things to say. Yeah, we'll talk a bit more that, about that in a minute. Um, Emma, your, your clip that sort of talks to this. So, um, yeah, it does. It's about, my clip is um, from a choreographer called Crystal Pite. Um, it's uh, one of her pieces called Petroffenheit. Now, you'll see it in a minute, but I'm going to give you a bit of context. Basically, we also have, um, we do have um, something called Artists First, which is where we put the artists in control of their commission. So we've done quite a lot with... Um, Artists, visual artists, um, video artists, Richard McLean, um, uh, Mark's looked after, Michael Clark, I worked with him to try, and he did his, his uh, performance, that was quite a challenge, um, but we got there. And it's about if you give the artists and you let them use television as their canvas, what would they do? And in fact, Crystal Pite, um, and, and you know what, it, we've done that with playwrights, we did that, um, and we've done that with poets and writers as well, but this, I look after dance, and so this has got a rather special place in my heart, because it is the most out there piece of performance I've ever seen. It's extraordinary, and, and at the end of it, you can't help but be completely shocked by it. And I saw it when it first came to London, and, um, and then I was sort of raving about it. And I said, listen, she's coming back. We've got to do it. I can speak to her. We must do this piece. It's just incredible. Um, and I spoke to her, and she agreed to let us do it. Um, and I actually forgot that the first 10 minutes is practically black. So on television, I sat there watching it the second year going, oh, my God, the first 10 minutes is black. We can't see anything. But actually, it's an incredible story. She works uh, with an actor called Jonathan Young. Um, who you'll see in a minute is the guy with white hair. His, he um, was on a holiday in a cabin with his um, children and I think nephews and nieces and 
he stepped out of the shop and it burned down and they were all killed. And he went into um, serious decline and became a drug addict. And she worked with him to create this piece of dance <coughs> that would help him uh, rehabilitate, and it did. And it's just the most extraordinary piece. But it is really out there, so as a commission, it's pretty risky, because obviously we weren't... Oh, we weren't going for them. I must admit, that was the no question. Fracking. That was the yeah, question. No, no. That was the question. Exciting. Um, Let's use exciting. the word exciting. Okay, nobody, exciting. Nobody goes to work on a risky bus, do they? So you know. I don't know, 102, yeah, maybe. But anyway, exciting. so, so, so it's, a, it's a sort of... Um, it's uh, an unusual piece. It wasn't a ratings winner, that's for sure. But I thought that actually, it's if anybody should do it, the BBC should, because it's one of the most incredible pieces, and I think that people will should get a tiny glimmer of it. Should we have a look? Oh, what channel was that on? BBC Four. Would you? Do you think you'd stand a cat in hell's chance of getting that on BBC Two or BBC One? Uh, not on BBC One. Definitely. Also, it's kind of, it's, I mean, in that there's puppetry, flamenco, there's it's such a range, and there's quite a lot of spoken word as well. I think, you know what, I, I love BBC Four for indulging me on these projects. And, and even with Michael Clarke, I am, um, you know, I think BBC Four should do these programmes. I, I think it's perfect that it's on BBC Four, because actually that's the place where you can push the boundaries. <laughs> push the boundaries, and actually try and do things that feel a bit edgier. And so I'd, I'd gladly take that to BBC Four, and I think that's where it should be. Brilliant. So, Shaminda. Um, can I just ask, is this the clip that was meant to talk about risk? I'm yes. I'm saying risky. Yes. Not the other clip. I thought we had two clips. We've already done one clip, haven't we? Have we? No. no, we haven't. No, we haven't. Oh, we haven't. No, we haven't. Okay. Well, this I've is the risky one. I've got a clip of something coming up and a clip that is meant to be about risk. But Let's do the really. risky one first now, then. Okay. Yeah, this was the risky one. But how is Sky 50 risky? That just looks brilliant. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I suppose... It's anyway, sorry. It's that was, maybe it wasn't... <laughs> <the same. laughs> I suppose... Anyway, um, I, don't, I don't think it is particularly risky, to be honest. I think it's just sort of interesting <laughs> okay. and quite... Bold, is that a word? Okay. Yeah, we're not going to use that. I'm sorry, I'm quibbling with process here yeah. in a way that's probably not very helpful. So this is a clip of something um, that sort of has been talked about as being a bit risky, um, but isn't really risky, I don't think. I think everything is a kind of risk because there's all the risks that no one will watch it. Um, does that so, matter, though? Do, 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 well, does yes, it matter? Well, yes, of course it matters because none of us want to make something that no one watches. But what I think is, so I'm interpreting the risky thing more as something that just feels new and different and exciting. So this is a, um, this is what you're going to see is a really, really rough and not brilliantly done clip from a, a pilot for the big nasty show that hasn't been, um, it hasn't been um, on yet. So this was the pilot that got a show commissioned, which is going to start um, at the end of July. And it's the kind of, um, the grime artist, Big Nasty, who's now got a sort of a bit more of a sort of, he's done lots of YouTube videos and um, bits and bobs on TV. Um, but it's a, it's a project that is from Specialist Factual and Entertainment. And it's a kind of topical, um, topical sort of chat entertainment. And um, there's going to be some reportage in it that's going to get you into places in Britain, hopefully in ways that you haven't seen before. You're not going to get all of that from this clip. But anyway, here's the clip. So that, that doesn't look like an arts program. Just decipher well, that to well, us. Well, well, doesn't it? Well, exactly. I mean, I mean, that's, that's, that's why I'm asking you the question. It's it's arts and culture in the broadest sense. It's a way of looking and interpreting Britain by a uh, by an expert. Um, he's going to go on on journeys around Britain, showing us things we haven't seen before. Anyway, the point is that Specialist Factual at Channel Four has got a, is a very broad thing, and we've got lots of sort of precedents for working with other departments, and. I find it quite an exciting way. We've all been talking about grime for ages. And um, actually, you had a brilliant grime documentary, did, yes. Generation mm -hmm. Grime, which actually is another Sky Arts program I recently watched. It was really good. But this is, for me, we haven't done a sort of grime documentary. And we've spent a lot of time thinking about how are we going to, you know, how should we get into 
that world, how do we do it in a way that doesn't feel like sort of dad dancing or something? It feels like it's of, from the inside. One of my inside. highlights of being at Sky was getting Melvin Bragg to do a, to do a South Bank mm. about crime, which was um, really interesting. But this is from inside that yeah. world, and this it, it's going to be quite different from that because that's obviously really rough and ready, but you are going to feel like you're getting a new, slightly anarchic show in 11 o'clock, which is a space that our new bossy and Katz has talked about experimentation at 11, which will be from inside... Nasty and Mo Gilligan, who's a brilliant talent, inside their world. And I think that's really exciting. And that's sort of culture to me in the broadest sense. And we are, it, you know, as you might have read, you know, that sort of experimentation at 11 o'clock is one of the new things that we're trying to do on the channel. So if you've got any ideas for mad things that we should be doing at 11 o'clock, bring them, bring it on. It's Can I bring you a couple? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? Because obviously, you you uh, all play a significant part in the in the channel's output. Uh, and if you think about what's happening in the arts world out there, it's a, it's a massive. We've seen a huge boom in the arts uh, at a time of the toughest austerity and cuts going on. Uh, I think the creative industries contribute over ninety billion pounds to Britain. It employs two million people. Many of us sitting in this room. And it's growing three times the economy. I mean, who knew there'd be money in arts right now? Uh, so, so how do you, what do you make of that, you guys? And, and how, do you, how do you tap into that in your content? And, and is that sort of, does that give you optimism and wild enthusiasm for, for doing more and, and, and persuading your channel controllers to give up more money to arts? Yeah. Please do. <laughs> well, we we um, at the BBC we do we have a lot we have um, we do a lot of partnerships with um, organisations, museums, galleries, dance companies. So in fact, and I think that what we do is not only sort of work with them to make programmes, but actually being a public service broadcaster, we we have public money, and so what we're doing is actually trying to invest in them as well. So. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we do lots of projects that actually don't hit the television, but, um, but, but are like what? digital. Like what? what kind of things? Like, you know, there's um, the Civilization app, there was and Get Creative, okay. um, huge online, huge digital presence with civilizations. We work with over 300 museums all around the country that were all um, <coughs> doing projects and uh, tying in with our moments. So, in fact, it's a way of, we use often programs to jump out to the, the wider audience through museums and arts organizations and things like that. And I think we should do. And it's, a, it's incredibly fruitful both for us and for them. It's a sort of two-way process, but they, you know, they inform, they give us great ideas. They, um, we have meetings with museums every week and they're people that have just fantastic ideas about things they're doing in a few years. And so it really is a two-way thing. And I think that we have to do that. We have to support each other because actually it's a much better way, especially now in this sort of digital time, is a much better, better way of, of reaching a broader audience really. So, so we do that quite a lot. And, and the partners you have and that we have as well, they're often stepping into the gaps that are left by the sort of uh, the, 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 the government pulling back from arts education in schools as well. There's a bit of a gap there. Then we were, part of my obsession at the moment with Sky Arts is, is how do we get out of uh, out into the into the world in a slightly different way uh, that's beyond just being a TV channel. And, and how do we plug some of those gaps? Uh, and, it, and it's about you know giving people a, a voice as well in places that wouldn't norm people that wouldn't normally get access to uh, a, a medium by which they could have a voice. That's you see, really also we did, funny, it's the, the interesting that you say that, because we did um, Andrew Scott's Hamlet. We yes. recorded that, yeah. and I was so, I so wanted to do it because it's on the A-level syllabus this year, and I really wanted to make sure that we got it, this amazing uh, production of Hamlet, that it could actually be for kids that can't come, you know, to London and see that production, it was sold out, that actually would have a chance to see that amazing production funny, of Hamlet. Had, so it was, without the risk of name dropping, I had a bit of an argument with, Benedict Cumberbatch and Batch about this. Uh, he, he did his, his Hamlet and we sponsored it and we, we did sort of £10 tickets for kids. And uh, it was on National Theatre Live, so it was beamed into cinemas. And I wanted to broadcast it on uh, the channel as well. And he was the block to doing that. But um, And I had a sort of interesting discussion about him because he, he sort of didn't want it people just to be watching it on an iPad. He thought it was, should be a collective experience. And I have a lot of sympathy with that viewpoint because that's part of the joy of theatre and it often doesn't translate very well onto the big screen. But 
my point was that he was doing Hamlet partly to make it accessible to a wider audience, and by any means necessary, we should sort of do that. So I think part of the challenge, I think, often with you know, theatre works, with ballet, with opera, and dance, and that was especially done for TV, it wasn't a stage capture, but um, how, how, do you, how do you sort of bring those things alive specifically for TV in a way that sort of resonates with people? And that's a challenge, I think. Definitely. So, I mean, with, you know, I think we're all aware that ratings are down on channels. Uh, it's tough uh, for most channels at the moment. Um, and arts programming is sort of vulnerable to that, but sort of saved by that too, because obviously there's a sort of a general understanding that... Um, <laughs> That. Well, that's the sound of my alarm. I just woke sounds up. Really, uh, is it gen <laughs> so, so I think with, with, with Sky Art, um, with arts generally, that you're sort of protected that you don't have to rate, but also you're vulnerable if you don't rate. So, so uh, you know, with the sort of pressure on channels and, and ad revenue down and all the horrible things that channels have to worry about that arts producers maybe don't, how, how do you cope with that? How do you, how do you defend your arts output in the face of that in, in your own broadcasters? Well, I mean, I think, you know, in the end, we all want to do things that loads of people will watch. That's what we all want to do. We want to reach people. But in the end, you know, the ratings aren't the only measure of success and some things are just brilliant in their own right and have something to say and will hopefully kind of interfere in the national conversation somehow and make waves and you know we want to sort of we want to challenge people we want to sort of promote dialogue and debate and have you know like if we did something that actually loads of people sort of had a conversation about even if it was just on social media and it kind of it kind of changed the tone of certain conversations that would be a brilliant success and actually, I think at Channel 4, you know, Ian Katz has already been really clear about being massively <coughs> supportive of, of the arts as a way of helping us explain and understand our contemporary culture and the way we live and a way of finding and discovering new voices and new talent and diverse talent and more So women do you think stuff. we'll see so more I, arts I, in Sky well, on hope, Channel 4? Well, I hope so. There hasn't been a specific announcement on that, but I hope so, and I will obviously be fighting for that because it is a way, it is a way of finding, un, you know, voices from around the country, as Phil was saying, um, and doing stuff that means something and says something and that will hopefully live forever, which I, we could um, look at a next clip. Yes, shall we? Have a look. Um, so our, our clip is... is nice. uh, am I allowed to just... Well, I was just worried that you wouldn't get to see the clips. Because I'm no, sure we'll do... Really the, these, are, these, basically, these are clips that are coming up on the channel fairly soon, so we'll give everybody an opportunity to do that. And then a quick chat about diversity, and then it's going to be time for you to ask your questions. So please do get ready and, uh, and uh, stick your hand up when we're ready. But first, here's your clip, Shaminda. So this is, this, is, um, <laughs> this is a tiny bit. I didn't know which bit to choose from this film because I just love this film so much. In the end, just, like, just put that there because it's like funny. Um, it's Bryony Kimmings, a performance artist. This was, um, it's a series of three films um, which my glorious former colleague John Hay, who was the head of Specialist Factual at Channel 4, recently commissioned three films from... Um, it, the idea was that they were sort of artists we hadn't had on Channel 4 before who were sort of interesting in lots of different ways, but that we would hopefully reach people and interest people by kind of embedding them in fascinating places that we might not normally otherwise get access to. So Bryony Kimmings went to Birmingham's busiest sex clinic, hung around in the sex clinic and met three different three or four different people whose lives she then gets involved in. And of course, in amongst all the sort of conversation about vaginal warts and gonorrhea and chlamydia and all that sort of thing, it all becomes all about love and loneliness and relationships. And there's just, it's just so sort of touching and emotional and made me cry. And I suppose that's one thing in amongst all me banging on about you know, being challenging and blah, blah, blah. In the end, things that just sort of make you cry and touch you and sort of ring true on some emotional level are the things that we really remember. Which is what and, so um, much of art is supposed to do. Yeah, so I, um, that's going to that's gonna be on towards the end of um, July, and I really hope people love it. 
Fantastic. You've got a brilliant one as well. The Thai Shan Schoenberg, haven't you? Yeah. So these were at West Brom just as so they Ta- were getting... Thai Shan Schoenberg, yeah. who to me looks like a sort of Chinese Jeremy Paxman, is a really fascinating oil painter who was a judge on yes. another on this Sky Arts programme. Um, he, he spent... He spent a year, like, that's a really immersive thing to do. He basically spent the whole of the football season at West Brom Football Club while they were going through this amazing roller coaster of stuff. Like, they, two managers were sacked. They've now been relegated, sadly. But it's this amazing sort of frontline view inside the mad bubble of a, of a really great. rich football club. So I'm going to move you along because we've got and, two, um, more, two more clips to show. Uh, what would make your life easy, Susie? Okay. Emma, so here we mine, go. mine, rather fittingly, is from Snatches. A <laughs> hundred moments. Um, no, moments from women's lives over the past hundred years. Uh, not, th- we're not going to see a hundred Snatches now, no, are we? No, we're not. Right, okay. Just okay. wait for this my is clip. The, basically, yeah, they're... Wait, 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 some... for some, actually, wait, wait for something on Channel 4 next year. <laughs> you might well see something like that. But um, this is for part of the Here, Her Season on BBC, and it's uh, a collaboration we... Um, I had with Vicky Featherstone of the Royal Court, and she commissioned, uh, she, she created eight monologues with writers and actors, and they are, um, every time I got a rough cut through, I'd send it through to the channel, I'd be like, remember, unflinching, uncompromising. They are really hard-hitting, powerful, but absolutely brilliant, so. Here we go. You feel him before you see him. It's hard to put one's finger on it, but there's a certain atmosphere to the room. It's been arranged that we should meet, and then suddenly, quite suddenly, his plans had changed. Of course, he was apologetic, Effusively. His assistant was quite emphatic about this. He's terribly sorry and truly disappointed. I was to know that he'd been looking forward to our meeting very much, but unfortunately, he's had to go to care. Third time he cancelled. I began to see that there was a method to his behaviour. It's not what you want to hear, but he's a clever, clever man. So uh, there are eight different stories, and um, I really wanted to, to, for the arts contribution to this season to be really quite provocative and hard-hitting. And... Um, they cover all sorts of different things. You have sexual liberation, a woman having her <coughs> orgasm, her first orgasm. You have the woman who actually um, uh, challenged the um, expert who about multiple cot deaths. Um, you have Indian protest fighter. There's a whole range of these 15-minute films, eight, eight of them, and they are just incredibly powerful. And we wanted to do something. When, when are they on? When, when can we Next see them? Week. Next week. Okay. Next week. Brilliant. I'm sorry to cut you off because we've been running sorry, out of time. And I do want some question time. So, Phil. So, uh, nothing sexy about this clip. I don't think it's Ronnie Wood. Um, so we've got, um, we, got uh, we do quite a lot of rock and roll on the channel. One, one thing I should say about Sky Arts is we do kind of attract quite a, a bit of an older audience and we're quite happy with that. Um, and so uh, our rock and roll heritage is quite important to us. Uh, the rock and roll series uh, was mentioned previously as one of those things. Uh, we work with Brian Johnson from ACDC. Uh, Ian from something else over there and makes that brilliant series for us where Brian Johnson goes around the, the world interviewing uh, crusty old rock stars uh, and Dolly Parton. And um, this, is a, this is another artist in residence show, I'm afraid, but um, it's absolutely brilliant. And it's Ronnie Wood embedding himself in various institutions and he's quite an accomplished painter, so he paints what he sees. He does a bit of a money and things. So this is a little clip of him with Paco Peña, I think, isn't it? So. Yeah, so I mean, it's a way of you know using a famous rock star to get us into different worlds. It's quite Brilliant. effective. Amazing clips. It's just uh, it started off with a quote about inspiring people, and and I think all the 
all the things you've shown and talked to us about have been really inspiring and I feel really invigorated by it. So thank you very much. Um, do we have questions from the floor in the last five minutes? Yes, hello. Hi, it's just a question for Phil. So, um... Oh, hi, Phil. Um, it's just a question for you, who are you Phil. Who are you, sir? Uh, it's Paul from BBC Studios, Top Hello. Fun Live in yeah. Salford. Hi. Right. Um, just uh, with um, the changes with Sky Arts possibly going um, free to air and what have you, are you guys still in business for like commissioning? <coughs> and if so, is it just for your kind of passion strands and rock docs, or are you open for like brand new series and whatnot? Uh, I didn't catch the first bit. It's, it's, um, with um, with um, Sky Arts possibly going free to air. Uh, oh, right, okay. So, uh, yeah, look, I mean, we're, we're, we are in the middle of sort of looking at the channel and where it can go next, that's, that's for sure, but we're completely open for business for new series. Uh, I'm not sure how much longer we'll do the passions thing for because, you know, we've done quite a lot of them, them now and it might be time to move on to something else. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm interested in exploring art movements at the moment as well and, and getting more embedded in institutions as well. So, um, you know, we're, we're talking about lots of different things we could do with the channel in the future. The free to air is one of them, but I'm not sure that's necessarily a good idea. We're, we're sort of debating it at the moment. Um, but yeah, no, we're completely open for, you know, it's, I think we'd all say this, you know, sometimes uh, it's difficult to sort of do a shopping list of what you're looking for because you kind of know it when you see it. And, 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 uh, and you know, like and so the, the, the ideas just leap out at you sometimes. So please keep sending them in. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Right at the front here. I think you can probably. Can you shout? It's not a very big room. And what you're not looking for, people? Oh. Have you got enough music docs? Have you got enough, um, you know, dance? Can you be broad just, as that? Just nothing sort of boring. I mean, just. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, don't be I don't, boring. I don't know if I can intellectualise. So I think, prob you know, prob <laughs> probably boring <laughs> is is a lecture. Probably boring is a, a lecture with accompanying pictures. Not, not, like, not you know, not necessarily depending on who's giving the lecture, but you know, a traditional arts program is probably not, sur not sort of surveys about things, not things about things necessarily. You know. But I just hate putting boundaries on it because in the end, like mm. Phil was saying, we all just want to be surprised. And you could come up, I say, oh, it shouldn't be like about a survey of a period or something. And you could come up with the maddest thing about surrealism that anyone's ever heard of or something. So I just hope that what I've said about the kind of things we would be excited about, you know, how we want to be surprised. And it might be so out there that you don't even know how to make it. What is it that you want to make? I think that's... Or you don't even know how to, but you've got half an idea that is so mind-blowing that you just want to talk about it. <laughs> Emma. You Me, want to, yeah, sorry. You, you, well, no, I just can't think of it. No, I mean, really, we, like I say, we commission a lot of programmes. So I think at this stage... I'm interested in all sorts of different formats. I think that we don't really want to go beyond an hour if we're going to do it, if we're looking at a series, a three-part series, really, and sometimes we'll extend to four, and if it's really fantastic and huge and reputational, then we'll even go to nine or ten, but I think it's good to go for three. Don't, don't bound yourself in, I think is probably the message from everybody. Well, I will say things on Sky, so I, wouldn't, I wouldn't take a panel show, but I sort of might if there, yeah, was, a, if right. there was a brilliant Depending one. Depending so who was on the panel and what they yeah, wanted to discuss. and what it was about. Yeah. You know, but so it's, it's really Any other questions quickly, because I've got red light flashing at me. I think we are out of time. Oh, one more, quickly, yes. And then we've got to stop. And... The bells ring. We're going to turn it all turn into pumpkins in a minute if it does. I, I have kind of two part question. Um, I'm from Canada, therefore I have a question. Do you work with films from outside of UK? And uh, if you can also talk a little bit more about dance films, not like live performances, but dance film stories, I guess. Okay. So um, yes, I do work with companies outside of the UK. It, it's and dance films I'm always interested in, but they have to have really great stories there. It's not just enough to be great dance, there needs to be something, a really strong narrative there as well. So I can, we, we're, we have a show that's been made by an Italian company called Bolandi, which is called Why Do We Dance? There we go. <laughs> so both, both things in one answer. Uh, and it's a kind of uh, uh, explanation of the history of dance, but asking the question, why and do we dance? Just quickly, do you, do you all have acquisition, arts acquisition strategies? Is that another way for people to come and bring arts ideas to you? 
Yeah, gotcha. actually, we do a lot of pre-buys. Yeah. We'll do a lot of... Uh, we'll help so there's acquisitions, probably pre-sales. There's a whole range. Yeah. So should they, but should they, uh, if anybody's got something like that, they should go through your acquisition team or come to you? Um, probably come to us first yeah. and then we put them... Okay, yeah. we can help you out. Yeah. Right, we're really out of time. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you so much to Shaminda, Phil and Emma for giving their time and being so generous. And, uh, and thank you very much for your time. Have a great festival. <laughs>